Yo, yo, what up? This is Raphael, the director of scouting for NBA Big Board. I got another special guest for you. And in my opinion, this is the best on-ball defender in this draft class. But a lot of you may not know, kind of slid under the radar, even though he was at a school that went deep in the, in the tournament. Kevin, what's up, man? How are what's you? What's good with it, dog? Chilling, man. All right, let's, let's talk about your defense, right? That's, that's in my opinion, that's going to be like your, your, your calling card, the skill set that you can hang your hat on. Defense is something that it's a mindset. Mm -hmm. When did you know that you were a great defender? Uh, I'd say just growing up, uh, you know, my dad was a coach for me at a young age, and he kind of emphasized you got to play on both ends of the floor. Uh, so every time I go out there, now I just try to go out the best player, and I just take it, you know, kind of uh, as a competitive challenge to kind of showcase that I'm going to lock you down. So you were a finalist for one of the top defensive players in the country. What, what did that mean to you that you're – that your defense was noticed. A lot of times, even in the NBA, when people think of a great defender or when they're on a list for awards, it's usually a big. Mm -hmm. But how does it feel as a wing that you got that recognition? Oh, that felt good. Uh, it was a lot of bigs on there. Um, and there was only a couple, like, wing guys and, and perimeter guys on there. So, you know, it, it's definitely uh, – it was great to see. I wanted to win it. But, you know, you know the big guys, they be, they be uh, controlling the pain. <laughs> but it was good. Bias, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it was good, man. Uh, people, you know, realizing that, you know, I'm taking a challenge every night. And, uh, you know, I, I take a you know, great response in going out there and guarding the best guy every night. So you're known for your defense. Texas Tech was known for being a, a very strong defensive team. But I feel like you got a little bit more offense than what people know about. So you, you had a lot of responsibilities as a ball handler. Is that your natural position? Oh uh, yeah, I play uh, you know one through the three. Just a hooper. Uh, yeah, and I ball can ball. guard one through the four. So uh, yeah, I'm just a hooper. Um, I'm, I'm very versatile in my game. Play on the ball, off the ball, and uh, you know knock down shots when I'm open. Yeah, so like when people look at the the raw numbers, they'll see like the three point percentage isn't great. But it was like 42% on catch and shoots. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like that part of your game is being undervalued? Or are people just not taking the time to do the research and see that you may not have been in the best position to showcase your full arsenal on offense? Oh, uh, yeah. If you turn on the game film, I mean, if you really sit there and watch, uh, you know, first thing, I just make winning plays, I feel like. And, uh, you know, impact winning nonstop and, and shooting. I can shoot the ball, um, you know. Better than better than what my numbers show, but uh, yeah, catch and shoot shooting is, is very comfortable with me. Um, corner threes, any, anything like that. So you know, playing on the wing and, and catching and shooting at the next level, I feel like would be really big for me. Yeah, because I I think that's more so suited for your your role mm -hmm. in in the NBA. I think you'll be doing more. You'll be put in more situations in catch and shoot than creating a bunch of off the dribble. Although you can create create off the dribble. I mean, I don't want to bash your school or anything like that, but when I watch Texas Tech, it's not the most creative offensive system. And I, I feel like you, you made the most of it, but you have the defense that's going to get you in. And then I think once you're in, you'll be able to showcase everything that, that you have. So how did you end up at, at Texas Tech in, in the first place? Uh, yeah, uh, coming out of high school, um, I had, you know, offers from, you know, a lot of places and stuff. Uh, coach Beard, Chris Beard was actually there. He's at UT now. Uh, he recruited me and my assistant, uh, the assistant coach there was Mark Adams, which is my head coach uh, mm -hmm. now at Texas Tech. And, uh, yeah, so uh, I ended up going out of there. And my family, my dad, he played at Texas Tech and stuff. So I went to Texas Tech coming out of high school. And it's been a good three years, though, uh, being able to showcase and, you know, just showcase my ability of being a versatile player all around. So you're, you're from San Antonio. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I live in Dallas. And, you know, of course, Texas is now turned into, like, this basketball state. Dallas yeah. had five and Dallas all around. I'm not from Dallas, so... People at home don't think I'm repping Dallas. I'm, I'm still from Nebraska. But San Antonio, it's like you don't hear about San Antonio and the basketball scene. You hear about the Spurs, but, like, does San Antonio have, like, is it just like a, an underground basketball talent factory that's going on? Because, I mean, there's a few guys, like uh, Torian Prince is from San Antonio, Jordan Clarkson. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel like there's a lot of players of San Antonio that are under the radar? Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, San Antonio, uh, everybody look at, like, the Dallas and Houston and stuff. And, of course, you know, they got good people, you know, great players that came out of there. But San Antonio got some hoopers for sure. You know, it's a couple of us that make it out each year, and, and we are trying to, you know, put the city on the map. So, so yeah, hopefully um, you you can – Add your name to that list of NBA players from San Antonio. So let's talk about this draft process. How, how has the process been for you? 
Oh, it's been good. Uh, going with AMR agency and stuff. Uh, being out with Aaron Riley and stuff. Uh, shout out to Aaron. Yeah, shout out Aaron, man. Uh, it's been good though, man. Just been out here grinding. Um, you know, doing three a days, four a days, sometimes five a days uh, workouts, just different things. And uh, you know, trainer Alan Watson. You know, he's getting me right and stuff. And out here training with a great player, uh, Jake Laravia too, and that's in the draft right now. But it's been good, man. Just you know, picking up little things along the way, just adding to my game and just building repetition and, and building confidence in my game. So, what's the main focus for for your pre-draft workouts? Uh, really, just just everything, uh, touching, you know, ball handling, shooting, of course, on the defensive end, working on that. You know, I'm just picking up on little things. Watching the NBA playoffs right now, I like to just look out there and watch other guys and kind of pick, you know, little little things up as I go. And I really just staying locked in and eating right and just doing all the little things to, you know, help me reach my goal. So you're in like this kind of awkward predicament in a sense because you're preparing for the draft, but it's now out that you're in the transfer portal. How are you managing trying to figure out what's what's next for you? Uh, really just taking it day by day and uh, praying and talking with my family. Um, you know, I still got some workouts with some teams coming up, uh, combine and stuff's coming up as well. And, um, you know, just getting feedback and different things like that. But my main priority is, is chasing my dreams of, you know, being an NBA player. Um, if that doesn't work out, then obviously, you know, more focus moves on to, you know, finding my next home in, in college, you know, whether that's at Texas Tech or somewhere else uh, out there. So. Yeah, man, I've spent the day watching you work out, and I feel like you probably don't even have enough time to think about it <laughs> because, yeah. you know, you're working out three, like you said, four or five times a day from pool workouts to weights to shooting, going back in the gym at night shooting. So I guess that kind of makes it a, a little bit easier. You know, they say you have too much time, then you can start thinking. As far as, like, the shooting, right? Mm -hmm. So, again, we, we talked about the, the catch and shoot numbers are good, but overall the raw numbers People are going to look at those and say, oh, well, you know what? He needs to work on his shot. How many shots do you feel like you're getting up every day? <sighs> Considering you're working out at the minimum twice a day doing, doing shooting. And, and, like, from what I saw, you're not just shooting set shots. I mean, you're working on creating off the dribble. You're shooting yeah. fadeaway, step backs. I mean, <laughs> yeah, you're, nah, you're we're working on the whole working game. Working on a whole lot. Um, I'll say, um, for sure, it's over about, it's over 600 shots a day, for sure. I feel like uh, six, 700 shots a day just working on craft. And I feel like, you know, really with shooting, it's mostly about confidence. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, just building your confidence and, and confidence in your work, you know, just believing in yourself. So I feel like that's a big part of it. And I can't wait to get in front of teams and, and showcase that. I mean, I, I agree 100% because just watching you shoot, like if I didn't know anything about you coming into the workout, I leave saying like this this guy can shoot, right? And so when you get that opportunity to show teams that that you can shoot, considering that I mean this is probably like a tough question. Considering that with everything that's going on in college basketball now, mm -hmm. you have this NIL I think is a game changer, right? And so is there a certain guarantee you need to keep your name in the draft? Like I, I feel like you're in a very very unique situation that is kind of like I mean, I guess specific to this year, like in years mm -hmm. past, guys didn't have this many options. Is, is there a certain thing that you need to hear that makes you keep your name in the draft? Uh, you know, just hearing feedback that I'm, you know, for sure, you know, going to be picked up by a team and given a chance and opportunity and not only just get picked up, but have a chance to, you know, improve in a system mm -hmm. and, you know, have a, a long career in the NBA. It's not just about getting in, but getting in the right fit. And that's why I'm working with uh, AMR agency and stuff. You know, they do a lot of research and do all the stuff behind the scenes to, you know, help with that. And, uh, you know, yeah, the NIL, you know, it's a game changer and yeah. stuff like that. Nowadays, people are going this and there um for those reasons um but you know i'm focused just on the nba stuff right now but you know if i get the feedback that i wasn't looking for then of course then i gotta go back to college and, and see where that, that route takes me yeah and i mean for your sake i hope that that you that you get drafted just because that's that's everyone's goal and um i feel like once you get out there in front of nba teams and they get a chance to to know you and see you work out then it's going to it's going to help you out so here, here's a crazy question for you so I, I i try to think of myself i try to add, answer or ask questions from various perspectives right mm -hmm. so let's say i'm an agent right okay and i see your name on the list for a workout mm -hmm. why would why would i send my guy to work out with you i'm, I'm gonna run from you yeah. you're taking money out of my guy's <laughs> pocket do you feel like you're gonna run into that 
Uh, I feel like it might happen. Uh, if I'm sending a guy to, to go against me, I know that I'm going against one of the best defenders in, in exactly. college basketball. So, uh, you know, that's just uh, the mindset that I have. And I, I feel like my, my work has proven that. And, um, you know, if you're an agent like that, yeah, it might happen, though. I don't know if you want to send them, but if you do, then it's going to be, a, you know, competition. And that's all it is. So it's going to be fun. Yeah, because I'm thinking, like, all right, does that help you or hurt you? Because if I got a guy that he is consistently on mocks as a top 30, 40 player, right? Mm -hmm. And his calling card is his offense. And I'm not going to send him to work out with you. Because there's no help defense. It's just, you know what I'm saying? It's going to be just you and him. Yeah, you're on that island. On, yeah. on an island, right? <laughs> yeah, island. And so if he's supposed to be this creative offensive player and he can't score, then, you know, he just lost money. So mm -hmm. do you think by you being such a good defender and not – being like so highly touted do you think that will work against you in a sense well i feel like you know some people might do that but i feel like also some people might want to get in there and be able to go against me if they can score on me i feel like they're scoring on somebody that you know really takes that end of the, the basketball game seriously and uh you know defense that's what it's about playing both ends of the floor and being versatile you look at guys like paul george and, and Kawhi and stuff like that how they affect both ends of the game yeah. uh it's just you know it's making winning plays guys like marcus smart right now uh they they doing it big so bridges yeah, Bridges, yeah. yeah. Michael Bridges. You just look at the guys like that, and that's kind of who I model myself after. Yeah, I mean, every team needs a guy like you. Every team needs a guy that can switch and defend one through three, one through four, a guy that's just going to, to be physical, that has length. So I definitely feel like there is a role a role for you. And But I'm just thinking, like, dang, if I'm an agent, if I'm a team, of course, I want to see – you work out against this guy that's supposed to be a great offensive player, but agents have so much power now. Yeah. Everybody's trying to protect their, their their players' draft stock. So I think it's going to be very interesting for you because I, I imagine that guys are going to be ducking you, which is like a compliment to, to, your, to your defense. Yes, sir. All right, so now I, I was an agent in my last question, <laughs> or played the role of an agent. Now I'm a general manager, a decision maker of an NBA team. Why, why should I draft you? What do you bring to the table that separates you from everybody else? I mean, there's a long list of guys that put their name in, in, into the draft, but why, why you? Uh, I feel like at the college level and everywhere I've been, I, I'm a proven winner. Um, you know, I feel like I'm going to compete on both ends of the floor. Uh, like I said earlier, I guard one through the four. On the offensive end, I feel like I can create my own shot, create for others, and, uh, you know, play multiple positions and, and adapt to any system that's out there. And uh, I feel like I'm just a culture guy, and I just want I'm all about winning. So, And I touched on it a little bit. And uh, are you a point guard? Yeah, I feel like I am uh, in this last season. That's what I played. But, you know, I play one through the three, so it really doesn't matter to me. Uh, you know, being like a secondary ball hunter that can bring it up and, and help facilitate when needed, but also play off the star guys and, and kind of move around and, and be able to knock down open shots also. So I didn't ask the question as a doubting if you were a point guard. So yeah. don't, I don't want you to feel that way. No, no. But I was just sure. like, I, I, I feel that you can play multiple positions, mm -hmm. but I was just trying to see, like, which is your – your 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 best position because I can easily see a team using you as a secondary ball handler mm -hmm. or I can see a team using you as a three and D guy that just kind of stands in the corner yeah. especially if they do their their research and do the numbers that show that the catch and shoot uh, percentages were good mm -hmm. but I was just trying to figure out like which are you most comfortable comfortable playing at because I think defense is going to be like the skill set to hang your hat on but I don't want to box you in as just a defender, yeah, yeah, as facts. a guy that only can play defense. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean... No, yeah, as of right now, I'm a point guard for sure. Uh, I feel like, you know, I feel like making the decision and, and getting people where they need to be, being an on-court vocal leader, getting guys where they need to be and stuff like that is a big big thing with me and taking care of the ball. You know, just putting putting passes where guys need to be and kind of knowing my team and stuff like that so I kind of you know take all that into so I definitely say I'm a point guard but like you said I'm kind of just positionless kind of do it yeah. all so so on the defensive end of the floor who who do you feel like you play like on defense was there a guy that you pattern yourself after 
Um, I say like in the league right now, uh, like defensive wise, I watch a lot of like Mikael Bridges and stuff. Mm-hmm. And my favorite player personally is Paul George. Why is he uh, so? Un- I feel like Paul George is at the point where he's just not getting the respect that he deserves. He's a great shooter yeah. on volume, on tough shots, yeah. but. I don't know. I just think he's a guy that the media has just kind of decided to pick on. But yeah, they always be on him about different things. But when they when he up, they on him. But when he down, they for sure try to get on him. But nah, he he all time great to me. So yeah, definitely. So it, it's almost like PG. And I mean, this would be a great scenario for you. PG kind of made a name for himself early in his career as a defender, mm-hmm. and then slowly he became like this offensive weapon that could handle the ball, could shoot, shooting on high volume tough threes so yeah. do you feel like you have a little bit of paul george are you on the offensive end too for sure yeah and that's what i'm working on every day just to keep building and stacking days like how you know get to where he is on the offensive end but i definitely feel like i got that in me so this is a question i was i was asking jake earlier has it hit you that you are close to like it's within grasp of reaching your dream and you're you're going through this pre-draft process has it really like hit you like man I'm actually a couple great workouts away and two months away from being an NBA player. Uh, yeah, you know, I think about it. Uh, I kind of not try to not to like think ahead too much. Uh, just being with my family and stuff and just praying about all this stuff and just trying to work hard every day. Um, you know, it, it's it's like surreal kind of that it's right around the corner, really. Um, you know, but I try to just lock in every day and just keep getting my body right and my mental right every day and, uh, you know, just see where it takes me. But uh, I'm definitely ready to be in the NBA. Last question. What does it mean to you to be underrated and under the radar going into these workouts against guys whose names are on most draft boards like what how does that make you feel uh it makes me hungry um you know i feel like i had a chip on my shoulder my whole life growing up uh like you said earlier just coming from san antonio not a lot of guys you know get love from down there and um you know it's really just been like in a way just me and my family kind of you know just they helped push me my dad you know growing up my mom sister staying on me um you know i always felt like i got a chip on my shoulder and just always hungry and that's when i match up and i I go against other guys that you know got the love and respect Uh, i'm I'm very competitive and uh i'm all about winning so i definitely got a chip on my shoulder always well man thank you for your time i appreciate it one of the best defenders in college basketball hopefully one of the best defenders in the NBA in the next five years. Once again, it's Raphael, NBA Big Board, and I'm out.